In this tutorial, I'll be showing how we can use a try-catch construction in Java to avoid a program crashing when invalid input is given in a console application. Since this is a fairly simple concept, I'm not going to do a presentation in this tutorial. Instead, I will just directly go to the code example. So let's just open my Eclipse again. And I'm going to use the Java Tutorials project again. So I'm just going to create a new class and I'm going to call this one try catch example and I'm going to auto generate my main method since I don't like typing so much. So again, let's get rid of those comments. Okay, so let me first illustrate uh, what problem I'm trying to solve here. So for starters, I'm going to create a scanner again which I'm going to name input and again of course is using the system.in and let's just do the import before I continue and I want to use the enter button as the delimiter to let the program respond the key in the program respond to the enter key on my keyboard so typically I would want to use this scanner to, for example, prompt a user. To prompt a user for a number. Enter a number. After which I retrieve a integer called number from the keyboard using input dot next integer. Finally, I am simply going to print this integer. There you go. So, if I run this program, what will actually happen is the program prompts me for input, and I key in a number, for example, 42. And it simply shows that the key the number is 42. So, so far, nothing really wrong other than I don't want my number to be shown at the next line. So, so far, no problem yet. Yet, if I run the program again, and I choose A, which is a character, not an integer, this will happen. I will get a java.util.input mismatch exception, simply because I can't convert a character, A, to a integer which is a number. This is rather annoying because I have no control whatsoever over what my user will key in in the program and I preferably don't want my program to crash every time somebody does something wrong either on purpose or accidentally. So we need to build in some sort of check that prevents the program from crashing if there's a invalid input. For that we will use something called a try-catch construction. Okay, let me first just uh, use the basic syntax, show you the basic syntax, then I'll explain how it works. So I'm going to start by incorporating the code that I want to execute with a try-catch block. So in this case I want to incorporate this code. So for that I'm going to say try, open Arcolat, and below the code that I want to use this uh, checking on, I'm going to close the Arcola. Let's just nest my code a little bit. Then, then below there I'm going to create a catch block containing input mismatch exception x which needs to be needs to be imported and again an Arcola open and an Arcola close. And let me just give an error message. Okay, so what did I just type? Okay, this error I'll worry about in a moment. Let me explain first. So what did I just type? First of all, the code that where an error can occur, I have incorporated it in a try block, which means that Java is going to try and successfully 
execute this piece of the code. And as I said, something can go wrong at this piece of code. If my user keys in uh, an invalid input, for example, a character where a number is expected, something will go wrong. In Java terminology, we would say a exception is being thrown. Exception meaning something went wrong. Exceptional behavior, something went wrong. So when that happens, when either one of these two lines throws an exception, the catch block triggers. As a matter of fact, the catch block triggers when a java.util.input mismatch exception occurs, which is in this case wrong input. It will then continue on to execute the code inside the catch block. So in this particular case, it would mean that it will print the value, uh, print the line invalid input, as opposed to this ugly error. Okay, so before I'm going to demonstrate how this actually works when I run it, I'm going to correct this very minor mistake because the integer number only exists inside the catch block, try block. I cannot use it here. So I'm just going to move the declaration of my integer number outside the try block and give it a initial dummy value of zero. Change the value of number here using input.nextInt and then simply print it out. So as you can see, the error is now gone. So if I run this program, well, first I'll just use a regular number, enter, enter number is 42, so no problem there. If I rerun the program and I key in uh, AB, for example, which is wrong as a text, and I press enter, it will now simply show invalid input and enter number is zero, which is the dummy value. So basically what happens, uh, maybe I can show that using debug mode. Is I have my integer number, which is zero. I go into the try block. I do the print and I prompt the user for input. So I key in uh, AB in this case, enter. After that, an exception is thrown. So the catch block is triggered. So if I now do the go to the next step, simply invalid input is printed, after which the program will just continue as per normal in this case, and proceed to print a number which has a value of zero. So even though I have made that ugly input mismatch error go away, it is still not an ideal situation. Preferably what I would want to happen if the input mismatch exception occurs, um, I want to do the input to be to use it to be prompted for the input again. So how can I do that? Well, one thing I could do. Let me just stop the program. I could, for example, shift my prompt for input to the catch block. However, this will have as a downside. If I do A B, then I still get my exception. And after that, it will do still crash. So this is not really the ideal situation. So let me show you how you should solve this. Okay, first of all, I am going to incorporate my try catch block in a while loop. And this while loop should keep on repeating as long as a certain boolean that I've not specified yet is true. So in this case, I'm going to declare a boolean named again, and I'm going to declare the initial value to true, and I will keep on looping while again is true. Which means that my input is correct, so if this particular line does not throw an exception and a catch block is triggered, I should set my boolean again to false which means that at the end of the try catch block, the condition will be checked again. Since it's false, it will then terminate the while loop and print out the line. If this line causes the catch to trigger, throws an exception, simply this will be printed, again will still be true and the whole thing will repeat. Sounds easy. However, there's still a problem and let me demonstrate what this problem exactly is. So again, I can just key in a number, nothing will happen, the number will display, so no big deal. But say if I do the wrong input again, I use A, this will happen. I will end up in an infinite loop, and I'm going to switch this off in a moment, else it's going to probably crash my computer. 
So it will simply keep on printing invalid input. While by write, the program should stop again at this point and ask me for input again. Okay, the reason for this um, may sound a bit complicated. The problem is because this particular line uh, caused an exception, the program never handled my enter key and as a result it is still waiting for that. As a result I can also not stop the program again and ask for input again. How I should solve this is actually very simple. Inside my catch block, after I throw the exception, I should simply say input.next. So then basically the enter key will be handled and we'll move on to the next uh, to the next line. So if I now run this program and I key in A, it will simply tell me invalid input and ask for a number again. And this will basically keep on going until the moment I key in a number that is correct, in this case 42. Then the program will exit. So just to wrap it up, let me just show you this in debug mode so you can see what happens. So again, I start with my number, which is zero. Go to the next line, I create my Boolean again, which is set to true. Go into my try block, I request for a number. I prompt my user for the number, so I key in well, A, which is not a correct number. The catch block triggers. Which will, um, which will print this line. Please note that again is still true because the program term, uh, threw, an, threw an exception at this line, so this line never got executed. It straight away jumped here. So going to the next line, we go back to the while loop. The condition is still valid because again it's still true. And we simply repeat it, so we prompt for input again and ask for the user to do an input. So in this case, uh, 7, enter which does not throw an exception, so again it's set to false, which means the try is done, the catch will not trigger. We go back to the check the condition for the while loop, in this case again it's false, so the condition will fail. Then we'll go to the system the auto print line, and the number will be printed and the program will be terminated. And that's pretty much all what I wanted to show for the try catch block. Oh, one more thing. Say if you don't exactly know which exception is going to be thrown in here. In this case I knew it was an input mismatch exception, but say if I don't know what kind of exception it is, or multiple different types of exception can be thrown in, um, I can use a more generic exception type to monitor for, called exception. Uh, input mismatch exception is also an exception. So if you don't know what's being thrown in, just use this one, exception, basically it will capture pretty much anything that go, can go wrong. As a matter of fact, my program will still execute as per normal. So that was really all that I would like to show for this tutorial, and again, I hope it was helpful, and see you at the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.